Fear Street, Netflix's new horror trilogy that takes a look at an accursed town and follows a group of teenagers who work to uncover the truth behind the series of serial killers that have plagued the town for centuries. I really enjoyed this trilogy, from the approach to set the preceding movies in reverse chronological order to the homages made to the classic slasher films through the movie's killers. I highly recommend you check out this series because from beginning to end, it's a very fun and enjoyable watch. This trilogy offers a lot to gush over, but it also has a lot of faults. Like the rules and mythology of the curse feeling convoluted and complicated at times, and some of the characters being downright OP. And no, I'm not talking about the killers. I'm talking about Josh. That character is downright clairvoyant. Wait. What, a razor? Yeah, for like, old timey shaving, or in this case, I guess, slitting her wrist. She slashed her wrist. Was she singing something? What, was she singing a song like, like an oldie, like an oldie song? Jesus, are you me? But today, I want to talk about one of my favorite aspects of the trilogy, Shady Side. More specifically, how to characterize a town. Portrayal. The first characterization is how is the town portrayed to the audience. Fear Street takes place in the unfortunate town of Shady Side. Tragedy after tragedy, killer after killer, it seems like misfortune is the only thing that's guaranteed for the townsfolk. Not only that, but they are forced to watch their neighboring town in Sunnyvale bask in their success and privileged lives. While the town of Shadyside is struggling, Sunnyvale not only turns a blind eye, but they actively look down upon them. What you should do is light a fuse and burn down Shadyside. Yeah. What'd you say? By having this dichotomy between the two towns, the rich and wealthy versus the poor and underprivileged, roles begin to develop for each side. Sunnyvale becomes an antagonist, and Shadyside becomes a protagonist. Immediately, Shadyside is at a disadvantage. Not only is there a series of brutal murders that have tormented the town, they get spit on by the pretentious asses of Sunnyvale who see Shadysiders as nothing more than a speck of dirt underneath their boot. All of these attributes develop sympathy for the citizens of Shadyside. It humanizes them. We want to see them triumph and we want to see Sunnyvale get their comeuppance. So now, we are not only rooting for our protagonists and Dina and Josh to overcome the curse, we are rooting for Shadyside as a whole and hoping for their success. Throughout the films, there are themes of innocence and guilt that are explored. At first, we're told to believe that Shadyside is guilty for all of the crimes that occur. They're pitied and used as scapegoats. Just an unfortunate set of circumstance. Just another person gone crazy. But that's not the truth. It's not Shadyside's fault. They're the ones who have been wronged. They're the victims. And as it turns out, Sunnyvale is more than complacent in this case. They're actually responsible. So with all of this, our little town of Shadyside becomes more than just a setting. They become one of the protagonists that we root for. The plot. Normally the setting is just a place to set a particular story within, but what makes a place memorable is when it's tied into the plot. Not only does a plot of Fear Street directly impact Shadyside, but Shadyside directly impacts the story. Not to mention, the entire trilogy is called Fear Street, an actual location in Shadyside. They could have easily named these movies The Curse of Sarah Fear or something along those lines, but they didn't, because the story revolves around the town. I mean, could you imagine if we were given a movie called Fear Street, but we weren't given any characterization of the town at all? That would be like giving us Star Wars, but it only took place on Earth. We've already established that the town is known for its history of serial killers, but the actual movie specifically follow the curse of Sarah Fear upon Shadyside. An example of how the town and the plot directly impact each other are seen in some of the structures we see throughout the series. The Hanging Tree. The Witch's Cave. For a trilogy that takes place in three different time periods, these structures help connect each generation of the town and helps weave a sense of consistency across each movie. Did you notice that the trilogy begins and ends at the same spot, inside the Shadyside Mall? Which is where the Hanging Tree resides, which is also where the second movie begins and ends. So not only do they provide a sense of connectivity, they also directly impact a plot. From the location that Seraphia was hanged, to the location that her bones could be found. It all drives the plot forward and determines what the characters do next. Last, and probably most importantly, what is a town without people? Yes, all of these points start with the letter P, I saw my opportunity, and I took it. Since the series takes place in multiple time periods, it can become pretty difficult to follow one set of protagonists throughout. But Fear Street remedies this in a pretty clever way, by making the characters a representation of each other and of the town. We see this dynamic multiple times in multiple ways. Dina and Sam, and Sarah and Hannah, 
Both are romantically interested in each other, but one is treated like a martyr and seen as a corrupter of the other. Dean and Sam, and Ziggy and Cindy, both used to be really close before one tried to change their image to escape Shadyside. And not only are these characters representations of each other and help connect the movies to the central plot, but they're representations of Shadyside and Sunnyvale. Dina, Ziggy, and Sarah represent Shadyside. The dark, the ugly, the controversial, the, the weird girl from Shadyside. And Sam and Cindy, and even good, represent Sunnyvale. Or rather, the lie that Sunnyvale represents. Pure and bright on the outside, but just as guilty on the inside. When Cindy and Sam try to escape Shadyside, they're accused of living a lie. Just like the actual town itself. It's all... Make believe. Thanks, Ziggy. So, by being able to connect the relationships of the characters with each other, we're able to build a continuity throughout the multiple time periods and we're able to create physical representations of the town that we're navigating through. So, with all these aspects, portrayal, plot, and people, we make Shadyside feel like its own character, its own protagonist that we invest in and follow throughout the story. These elements make you interested, they engage you, and they make you care. That just about does it for my analysis of Fear Street. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my take, if there are any parts you agree with, or you think I'm just talking out of my ass. This is the first video essay I've ever made, so let me know if you enjoyed this video, and let me know any critiques you might have, or you can tell me to just piss right off, that's okay too. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.